Welcome, my friends, to the first episode of TOEFL ITP Insider. And in this episode, we're going to talk about skill number one that is needed for the structure and written expression section. And actually, this skill is about answering one question. Does the sentence have a subject and a verb? Because we know that one of the basics of English language sentence structure is to have a subject and a verb, okay? So let's see how you can tackle this skill when answering questions in the ITB TOEFL exam. And let's go to the first question. And as you see, um, in the first question, uh, it's, a, it's an MCQ question, multiple choice question, and it says, was developed by a British physician named Dr. Elton. And now we have four choices, four options, A, B, C, and D. So, number one is last year, number B, in the evening, number C, diet systems, and number D, a weight loss protocol. Now, now the first question that you need to ask yourself is, do I have a subject or a verb in the sentence? So let's look at the sentence. Was developed by a British physician named Dr. Elton. So I've got was developed, obviously that's, that's a verb. Now, so we're supposed to be looking now for a subject. Now let's start with A and check it. A, last year, now this can't be a subject, right? Because, because what does it mean saying last year was developed? Last year, that's a kind of a time, right? Um, so no, we can't say last year was developed, no. And also in the evening, well, let's agree on something that the subject will never be preceded by a preposition. And we've got here the preposition in, and what follows a preposition is an object of a preposition, not a subject. So in the evening <coughs> is, can, can never be the subject. And I'm not talking here about only in as a preposition. I'm talking about, about any preposition. Subjects are not preceded by prepositions. And then we've got diet systems. Well, this can be a subject. However, Diet systems, that, that's a plural subject. And, and, and you cannot use a plural subject with was because then was would need to be were. But, but this is not the scenario here. Then this is not also a good option. Then we're left with the final good option here, which is a weight loss protocol. Yeah, because protocol is a singular uh, noun. So yeah, that can stand as a subject. So the answer would be a, a weight loss protocol was developed by a British physician named Dr. Elton. So that's the first one. Now let's move to the second question and read it together. And it says, doctors, but not smart enough to take away your decision making. Doctors, but not smart enough to take away your decision making. And as I said, you need first to check the sentence. Does it have a subject and a verb? That's, that's the first question. And we can see doctors at the very beginning of the sentence. So this might mean that, yeah, okay, well, that, that's the subject. But when we, when we look after doctors, we see nothing. We only see the connector, but, and they're not smart enough to take away your decision making. So we can't see a verb. So let's think of the options. A, intelligent, doctors intelligent. Yes, but intelligent is an adjective. It's, it's not a verb, so we can't choose it. So um, what about are smart? Oh, we have are, that's a verb. And smart, that's an adjective. So we can say doctors are smart, but not smart enough to take away your decision making. Okay, that makes sense somehow, grammatically speaking. But let's move to option number C and check it cleverly. Well, that's an adverb. So we still have no verb most of the time. 
Well, that's, that's not a verb as well. And that's why the only good answer here will be B. Doctors are smart, but not smart enough to take away your decision making. Lovely. So let's go to another question. And it's an MCQ as well. And we've got here the barometer reading 29.15 inches of mercury. The barometer mm, reading 29.15 inches of mercury. And then we've got, again, we've got options. So we have it is. We have it always is. We have is. We have always. Now, now, now let's check these. Now, what do we miss in a sentence? We've got the barometer. Obviously, that looks like the subject. So we're looking for a verb. Fair enough. Now, um, what about saying the barometer? It is because we have a verb. We've got is. But wait a minute. This can't go. Because in A, you don't. You, you don't only have a verb, you have a verb and you have a subject. Someone might say, Shadi, and what's the problem with that? I would say, yeah, there is a problem because you already have a subject in a sentence, which is the barometer. You cannot say the barometer it is, because this means that you will end up having double subjects. We don't want this. So we would say, uh, we cannot say the barometer it is. That's not a good option. So what about B, the barometer, it always is. It's still the same. You still have a double subject, which is it. We want only a verb. We don't want a subject. Then what about the barometer is reading 29.15 inches of mercury? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Why? Because is, that's a verb. So it's shady. But reading is there in the sentence. You don't consider reading a verb. Now look, my friend, any verb plus I in G cannot be considered a verb if it is on its own. It has to be preceded by something like um, something like am is our reading, was were reading, will be reading, might be reading, but only reading like that. No. OK. Present participle, and when I say present parti participle, that means verb plus ing, gerund, right? They cannot stand as verbs um, as they are, okay? And I, and I mean by verbs as main verbs, okay? They need to be preceded by something, right? Good. So, uh, is will be a good answer. Always is not a good answer, because when you say the barometer always reading, still, we don't have a verb. So let's come now to another kind of questions. And one of the questions that uh, we encounter in the ITB exam is when you have a kind of a sentence with some underlying parts and you need to discover the part where there is a grammatical problem. Now, here we've got uh, in this training a kind of more challenging questions because we don't have underlying parts. We want you to discover what the problem is on your own. So let's let's read the first sentence and it goes as follows. Um, yesterday worked out at home following the bottoms up workout. Yesterday worked out at home following the bottoms up workout. Now let's check. Do we have a subject and a verb? And then yesterday worked yesterday worked out. Oh, that, 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 that doesn't make sense. Because yesterday is a time. How can a time work out and okay uh, do exercises? So so we have the work the verb work out. Well, that is clear, right? Um, but it seems that we don't have a subject. So that is the problem. There is a subject missing and actually the original sentences yesterday i worked out at home following the bottoms up workout yesterday i worked out at home following the bottoms up workout right now let's move to sentence number two 
So let's look at this sentence. I'm saying your definition of the rules different from that of the actual US rules. Your definition, I'm saying your definition of the rules different from that of the actual US rules. Now, now let's think about it. Do we have a subject and a verb? Oh yeah, we've got I, that's the subject. Yeah, fair enough. I've got also, I'm saying that's a verb. Hmm, lovely. But wait a minute. There is another sentence. So it seems that this is a kind of a complicated sentence. This has got, we've got, if, if you think about it, the original one is, I'm saying that your definition. So I've got another clause here. Now, your definition of the rules different from that of the actual US rules. So your definition of the rules, that's another subject. And this subject needs a verb. So let's think different. That's an adjective, not a verb. From that of the actual US rules. That's a prepositional phrase. So it seems that this second clause requires a verb that is not there. So what is, what is the original sentence? The original sentence is, I'm saying your definition of the rules is different from that of the actual US rules. So is, is missing. Definition of the rules is different. Okay, so that's, that verb is very, very important. Now let's move to the coming one and let's see whether it's correct or not. This machine threw the fear of God into the jukebox industry. This machine threw the fear of God into the jukebox industry. Now, do we have a subject? Oh yeah, this machine is a subject. Do we have a verb? Yeah, through the verb. So fair enough, that's a correct sentence. We don't need to fix anything here. Now let's move to the coming one. The car which introduced the wrap around windshield part of an exhibit called Gold Standard of the World, Cadillac Eldorado, 1953 to 1966. Now, in order to discover whether this sentence is correct or not, we need to check it for subject and verb. So say the car. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a subject. Which, hmm. Now this is a relative clause now. Which introduce, can we consider introduce a verb for the car? No, we cannot. Okay, why? Because it comes inside the relative clause which introduced so the car which introduced the wrap around windshield part of an exhibit called gold standard of the world so we, we we don't see we don't see see a verb because we said that introduced cannot be a verb why it cannot be a verb it's a verb for which now so that's a problem now what is the original sentence how can we fix it we can simply fix it by adding the verb was before part of an exhibit. So it will be the car which introduced the wrap around windshield was part of an exhibit called Gold Standard of the World, Cadillac Eldorado 1953 to 1966. So adding was. And again, because simply, my friends, if you remove which introduced the wrap round windshield, you can remove all that. And then you can say the car was part of an exhibit called Gold Standard of the World, Cadillac Eldorado. Right, my friends. So again, to wrap up, the first skill in the structure and written expression section in the ITP exam is to be able to recognize the subject and the verb in the sentence. This was a skill number one. Thank you, my friend, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And in the coming episode, we'll be talking about skill number two. Okay, see you, my friends. Bye-bye.